Hello, everyone. Good to have you with us today. Thank you for viewing this service. Before we begin, we want to share the peace of the Lord with you wherever you are today viewing this. We pray God's blessing upon you as you worship and hear the word of God. Also, a couple of announcements to share with you today. First of all, we want to wish our mothers happy Mother's Day. Uh, greetings to you, and we pray that in these unusual times, you will be thankful for your mothers and, and find opportunity to celebrate with them and give thanks for them. Wanted to mention a couple of things coming up on May the 24th, uh, which will be a Sunday, a couple of weeks from today. There will be from noon till three, a grab and go food distribution. And you'll find more information about that in your bulletin and in emails coming out from St. John as to ways that you can participate in that. And so we invite you to pay attention to those uh, bits of information. Also coming up this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., I'm going to be offering a Bible study at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And you'll also find some information coming out in email as to how you can participate in that. So that will be a 7 p.m. Bible study on Zoom. Uh, would love to have you join me for that. Let's take just a few moments now and prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, to sit uh, still in his presence. And I invite you to offer a few quiet prayers and let's ask God to be with us and to bless us as we worship this day. the way, the truth alone can we the Father find. In you, O Christ, has God revealed his heart and will and mind. You are the truth, your word alone true wisdom can impart. You only can inform the mind and purify the heart. You are the life, the empty tomb proclaims your conquering arm. And those who put their trust in you, nor death nor hell shall harm. Are the truth, the truth, the life, grant us that way to know. That truth to keep the life to win, whose joys eternal flow. We make our beginning today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The three sad days have quickly sped. He rises glorious from the dead. 
All glory to our risen Lord, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Even as we glory in the gift of eternal life, in that hope we spend our days in joyful repentance and faith. Let us confess our sin, the sin that still so easily besets us, and receive the full forgiveness our Lord daily provides for us. Lord God, though the strife is over, the battle done, and now is the victor's triumph won, sin still hangs on. We are your baptized people. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into our Easter joy. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn to the epistle reading for today. It's written in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. 
How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let's go ahead and sing our hymn of the day. You'll find it on page nine in the order of service. Lord, take my hand and lead me. shadows lengthen and night has come. I know that you will strengthen my steps toward home. Then Please join me for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we come to you today grateful that you hear us for the sake of Jesus Christ. As we listen to his words today, that he is the way and the truth and the life, I ask that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, that they would be open and receptive to your holy word by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we would receive and learn and be built up as your dear children. We ask it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. A name can tell us a good deal about a person, but what it tells us isn't always good. I think about a few names as an example from leaders in history. I think of Uh, a leader, a ruler of England in the 10th and 11th century. His name was Ethelred the Unready. At least that's what people referred to him as. And it had to do with the fact that when the Danes tried to invade England, that he could not push them back. For a while he tried to pay them off. It didn't do any good. He finally fled to the western shores of France. Some in history who are more generous to Ethelred the Unready refer to him as Ethelred the ill-advised, as if to say he wasn't alone in his foolish decision-making. In much more recent history, we think of other names that have been given to people. We think of President Richard Nixon, who in many circles was known as Tricky Dick for his involvement in, 
in uh, the uh, Watergate scandal. But I also think about a person from France, a ruler in France from several centuries ago, who is simply known as Louis the Fat. Need I say more? Sometimes the names that we are given do not speak well of us, but sometimes names that we receive speak very well of us. And we too find examples of this from rulers in history. We think of Alexander the Great, the great emperor during the fourth century BC. Many centuries later, we think of Catherine the Great, the empress of Russia who helped her country become great in Europe and in Asia. But when we think of names that speak well of a person, no one has more of them or greater names than Jesus Christ because he is known by names such as Son of God, as Savior of the world, as Lord of all, to name just a few. But the names that I would like us to especially focus on as we think of Jesus here today are the ones by which he identifies himself in this gospel here this morning. And those are the names, the way, the truth, and the life. What do those names tell us about Jesus? Let's take a look here today. And let's consider, first of all, the setting in which he uses these names. He's having a conversation with his disciples, and he's just told them that he is going to be leaving them. And for that reason, of course, they are very sad. They're, they're brokenhearted. He tells them that he is going to be going to his father's house and that while there, he's going to prepare a place for them and that he's going to come back and he's going to take all of them to be with him so that they can all be together forever and ever. And, and he's sharing with them that his name or the way in which they can think of him is that he is the way and the truth and the life. He shares this with them so that they will be absolutely certain that he will see to it personally that they will come to that place and be there with him forever. And so he uses those names to identify himself and remind them of what he is going to do. But notice when he uses those names, he uses the definite article. He uses the word the. He doesn't say, in other words, I am a way and a truth and a life. He's not saying to them, in other words, if you want to get to heaven, there's lots of roads that you can take. And I happen to be one of them, so I think you should take my road. Nor does he say to them, when it comes to finding truth here in this world, everyone comes up or creates their own truth. You can take your pick. Whatever you want to be true is true. I just happen to think that my truth is pretty good, so I think you should listen to me. He doesn't say that. Nor does he say, when it comes to experiencing life, you can find life in all sorts of places, but I happen to think that I have a pretty good source of life and I think you should take a closer look. He doesn't say it that way, does he? He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. In other words, if you wanna to get to heaven, you won't find anywhere any way that will get you there except through me. And when it comes to truth, you will not find anywhere in all of the universe truth that does not originate with me because I am the truth. And when it comes to life itself, you will not find the source of life in any other person outside of me because I am the life. And what he says is very exclusive, isn't it? And for that reason, over the centuries, many people have criticized Jesus and those who follow him because of Bible verses like this. But what some of those same critics forget is that when it comes to religions, all religions of the world are exclusive. They all make exclusive claims. And therefore, the important question to consider is, when Jesus says that he's the way and the truth in the life, is he right or is he wrong? And it's the testimony of Holy Scripture and of millions of people's, people over the years that what he says is true. 
that he really is the way and the truth and the life. And that is good news for us because we are people who sometimes bear names that do not speak well of us. And we need to pay close attention to what Jesus says. We, in other words, have borne the name sinner and wayward sheep, lost sheep. We are people who, in other words, tend to wander away from God. We go our own way. We want to do our own thing. We are very willful. We don't care to listen to God in so many ways. And so Jesus comes to us and says, if you want to come to God, I can take you there. No one else can do it, but I can. I am the road to heaven and I can get you to God. And we also bear other names that do not speak well of us. We bear the name, for instance, of deceived and sometimes liar. We have demonstrated, in other words, that we are not always trustworthy. And that's the case because we have often walked in the way of the one who is known as the father of lies. That's how Jesus identifies the devil. And he says that the devil, when he lies, he is speaking his native language, which helps us to understand why this world in which we live is so full of deception, that there are so many things around us where we don't know what is real. We don't know what's true and what's false. And so Jesus comes into the world and he says, I am the one that you really can trust, that I am the one above everyone else who when he speaks actually is speaking what is true. And I'm trustworthy and you can trust me here in this world and you can trust me for the life to come because I will never lead you astray. And we are people who have also borne names like dead. And that's because that though we are alive physically, in when it comes to our relationship to God, the scripture says that we are, we are cut off, that we are not alive, but rather dead. And so Jesus comes into this world to make those who were dead alive and to experience a life that they can only experience in him. And so he says, come follow me and I will give you that life. In other words, when we look at Jesus, we find in him someone who gives us a new set of names. That he gives us names that now speak well of us. Names such as beloved and child of God and forgiven and alive in Christ. That's who we are now because of this one who identifies himself as the way and the truth and the life, Jesus Christ. And because of that, we praise him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are, that you have demonstrated yourself to us as the only way to heaven, the only source of truth, the only one who can give us life. Lord, because of who you are, we have a new set of names. We thank you that in Jesus, we belong to you and that in Jesus, we have an entirely new life. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to live this life and to walk in your truth and to experience everything good that you desire us to receive. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join me now in speaking our Christian faith. If you are following, following along in the order of service, you'll notice that we will speak the Apostles' Creed. And so we speak these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, with the whole creation, we praise you for your gift of life and the world that sustains us and all the living. Grant that seeing, you even, seeing your even greater gift of deliverance from the disfigurement of sin and the promise of the renewal of your original design, all people may come to repentance and faith in your gracious invitation through Jesus Christ, risen and victorious over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give power to your word as it is proclaimed boldly by your church, filled with the Holy Spirit in the faithful witness of all, as it is preached and taught by all who are ordained and commissioned by you, as well as those whom you have given the gift to be faithful witnesses of your salvation and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the hearts of all who bear the authority of government in our land and around the world, that they serve and lead all people in the ways of justice, peace, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all who suffer sickness or injury, give the comfort of your healing. We are mindful today especially of Aaron Agor, Rebecca Benefield, Miles Davis, Stephen, Steve Campen, Beverly Chamberlain, Janet Carter, Deb Curtis, Rosalie Dewis. We pray also for Angela Figueroa, Marie Ginther, Arlene Graham, Marty Graham, Chuck and Jackie Holler, Al and Marge Jennings, Lila Jane Johnson, Susan Johnson, Betty Luce, Ashley Labrado, Ron Opart, Michelle Palmer, Tim Rose, Logan and Xavier Summer, Christopher Zimmerman, and those that we name before you in our hearts. And to all who suffer any persecution for standing for the truth of the Christian faith, give strength to endure. To all, increase faith and faithfulness, believing that the risen Christ leads us to the glory of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the faithful who have gone before us, for the prophets and apostles, for saints and martyrs, especially your servant Stephen, we give you thanks and ask that your strength, that you strengthen us to walk according to their example throughout all our days to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we also bring to you any other concerns of our hearts at this time. God, today we are mindful also of our mothers. We give thanks to you for them, whether they are no longer with us or still with us to this day. We praise you for the gift that they have brought into our lives, even the gift of life itself. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless them as we give thanks for them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace, amen. For our closing hymn, let's sing together number 
739. It's on page 10 in your order of service. Precious Lord, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me. 